Okay. Now that we got that figured out, we can go. We can go to the store and and on our 14 gauge wire, 14-2 with ground. Uh, because I about I need about 14 to 16 feet, probably 16 feet. I could get a 20 foot roll, or if I know I'm going to be doing some other electrical, I could get a uh, instead of a 25 foot roll, I could get a 50 foot roll. Just depends how much you want to spend and and if you want to have extra. I usually get extra because this is off of this is off of a roll that was probably a 25 footer or a uh, a 50 foot roll, and I don't have enough and I know later on I'm going to put another ceiling fan in downstairs um, in in a couple rooms downstairs where there's no ceiling fan so I know I'm going to need to get some more uh, than tw than 25 feet so you can decide that and like I say most most lots of stores have it already pre-cut pre-packaged pre 25 foot roll 50 foot roll 75 foot roll 100 foot roll and maybe even a bigger roll than that okay same thing with with 12 gauge and 12 2 with ground and 14 2 with ground usually they'll have either one what if they don't have that what if you're a momsy popsy place and they don't have that well in the electrical department they probably have a big roll of this and they'll sell you it they'll take it off your their big roll and they'll sell it to you per foot okay and it's generally more than if you get a box store and you buy a 25 foot section or a 50 foot roll or something like that okay so now we got that covered what else are you gonna need for this you're gonna need you're gonna need uh, wire nuts for this you know you can you can get at the store you can get uh, uh, individual packets for yellow yellow wire nuts which which should work for this depending on how many wires you need to connect together maybe reds reds are bigger than the yellows then you've got orange and uh, uh, sometimes you can buy a little pack that has uh, different colors, you know, red, yellow, orange, blue, gray in it. You might want to buy a little package of that or something like that. Or maybe you want to just get one package of 15 or 20 of yellows, 15 or 20 uh, of red or something like that and do that. Okay, so you know you're going to need that. I know I've got some of that stuff. I might need some little ground clips or... Um, or you could put wire nuts on those if you want. I, I usually use a little crimp on uh, uh, um, ground, little crimp on. It's just a little sleeve. And I've got some of those, so you can look at the store and see, see what you need with that. And then we also know going up here across, when I have the cable up in there, um, I should route it in such a way to where I can staple it on the side of... Uh, two by six ceiling joists, two by eight ceiling joists, or the uh, the trusses or whatever, um, and I'll get some staples. And they have two different size staples, you know, to go over uh, this. If you're going to put two layers of this on top of each other in certain areas, you get a bigger staple, or you get a smaller staple that's usually good for just uh, one piece of this. So I'm going to get a little box of staples because I don't think I have any. Of those I might I'll have to look because I keep all my extra little things in one bag so I have to look at that and see all the types of parts that I need for that and because the attic is there if all the ceiling joists were going this way boom 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 and if I'm taking the wire and going across it you know technically you're not supposed to do that uh, if this was brand new let's say because the inspector doesn't like this, the uh, wires going across this way to where if somebody can step on it, uh, that's a no-no. And so he would make you put a uh, one by four up there or two by four nailed on top of the joist going this way. And then you take this, the wire and staple it on the side of it, on the side of a two by four, not the top because they don't like you walking on it. Or if there's an area where you can't really walk on it, let's say... Uh, you can go across the joist like like if this roof is going up at an angle you could you could go across this way over here because nobody has a step there but out here in the middle uh, you couldn't but usually in the middle they might have they might have a strong back or they might have a two by four or one by four that's nailed along there to keep all the the trusses you know two foot centers 16 inch centers whatever your 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 rafters centers are 
and there might already be something up there. So then I, then I can take that, the wire's there, maybe it's over there, I may have to go across and then come across or something like that. So either way, um, I've got, I'll have plenty of wire for that. I'll have, I'll have a little box of staples, okay? And I know I need a, a cut-in box here, a two-gang cut-in box, okay? A two-gang light switch cover plate, right? Okay? So far, there's not many things on the list for material. What else do you suppose we're going to need? Uh, of course, we're going to need a junction box up there, which is round. And that's going to be where the ceiling fan mounts onto there. Now, if you had a light, let's say you had a, already had a light switch in the wall, and that light switch went up to a light fixture in the middle of the ceiling. Let's say, could you use that box? Maybe, maybe this room didn't have a light switch for the outlets next to the bed. And in this case, ours does. And our switch controls that, see? Some rooms don't, have, some bedrooms don't have that. I'm, I'm floored to think that this house did not have a light fixture up here with a separate light switch that already went up here. But if it did, I would take the light fixture down and see what kind of box is up there. If that box uh, that's mounting that light fixture, that's holding that light fixture up there, if that box is plastic, chances are it's nailed to the side of a ceiling joist, okay? And usually your ceiling fan is gonna be heavier than what a plastic box is meant to hold. You don't wanna install your, your ceiling fan into a plastic box because your plastic box may only be attached on this side and the threads are going up into plastic threads uh, going up there so you don't wanna have your mounting uh, apparatus for your ceiling fan screwed up into plastic in plastic threads in a plastic box that's a no-no okay so you'd have to take that out and, and put a metal box up there because there's nothing up there we're gonna get a metal box and I'm gonna put it up there and and I'll have to go to the store and see what kind of box I'm I'm gonna need I could use a pancake box and a pancake box is like a half inch thick and it's round because I'm only going to need one wire that goes up there, a 14-2 with ground wire sheathed cable. This is the sheathed cable, it's called cable. And it's got three wires in it. That'll easily fit in a pancake box up there, okay? And I could do something like that, or I can get a metal box. And chances are, I'm, I'm not going to get a pancake box. Chances are I'm going to get another box that's the same diameter, probably four inch in diameter. It's probably an inch and a half thick or an inch and five eighths thick or something like that. And I can put that up there and then I'll need a piece of two by four to hold that in between. You know, I'll put that wherever it goes. Uh, there'll be two floor jo ceiling joists up there and then I'll have a hole out there. And then to put that box up in there, there's gonna be no backing up there, right? So I'll take a two by four, cut it in between the ceiling joists, whichever direction I go. So I know I'm gonna need some two, a two by four, right? And I have some scraps of two by four in the garage um, for off of another job. And usually if you're doing things on your own, you always wanna keep your scraps. So I've got a scrap that's long enough to do this. Uh, I could use a two by four flat ways up there, or I could use a two by six flat ways up there if I don't have a two by four. And, and to go to the store, uh, you can, uh, the smallest 2x4 you're going to be able to get, probably, is uh, uh, an 8-foot 2x4 or a, or a stud, which is 92 and a quarter inches. And if you don't have a truck or something, you don't want to carry it in your car, you can have them cut that in half for you, let's say, if you want. Or uh, get a 10-footer, cut that in half. You got two 5-foot pieces, cut a 12-footer in half, you know, so forth and so on. Or maybe you can talk somebody into, hey, I don't want to buy eight feet. I want to buy just, just three feet or just four feet. So you talk them into cutting a 12-footer and cut a four-footer off of that, and they still can sell the last bit of their 12-footer as an eight-footer. And then you buy just four feet if they can sell it to you by the foot. You can do something like that. Any, anything like that. You're going to need a two-by-four, and I'm going to put it in with screws, and I'm... I'm going to use 
I'm going to use some three inch long sheetrock coarse threaded uh, drywall screws and you could use nails you can use 16 vinyl pinning nails for that I'll, I can show you that later but but uh, you know so far I know I'm gonna need a metal box up there and I'll probably have a Romex connector connected onto that because I knock outs on the side of the box and that'll hold the the wire you put this wire in, there's little knock hole knockouts in the side of the box and on the top of the box, wherever.